welcome to this week's Monday Moments. Uh, today I have Matthew Smith, who's Managing Director of Buckingham Gate. Um, I'm sure he'll give you the proper full name in just a moment, but um, that's a bit of a mouthful for me. Um, but Buckingham Gate, it's, got, it's a great brand. And, and I've just heard, Matt Smith, that uh, your name was popped into the top 100 new model advisor list. Have I got that right? You have indeed, yes. Yeah. So for, for the first time, that's that's long been one on my sort of tick list of, of awards and accolades. And uh, yeah, this year, delighted to say that we uh, we have been nominated. So great to see. That's wonderful. So is once you're nominated, is that it? That goes into print and... And you it should do, them. yes. No, so that, that they have announced, I believe, now the full, um, you know, the full top 100 list. There's, you know, as, as always, some fantastic Excellent. firms that have been uh, recognised there. So uh, glad to be in London this year. Wow. So there's you, there's Austin Smith, who's another Indeed. tribe member, sole millionaire tribe member, and Simon, Simon Glazier up in Aberdeen. So that's exciting. Oh, my goodness. You're all a bit doing something ridiculous um, that people have to watch out for. So Monday Moments, um, this is about feelings and thoughts and, and visions and, and what you see about to happen. So let me turn it over to you, Matt. <laughs> what, what's on your mind and heart today? Yes, I suppose that, as we were just, you know, discussing before we, uh, before we came on air, I think it, it's interesting we're recording this uh, effectively, you know, just after the announcement of sort of lockdown mark two, and it, you know, it's interesting to sort of look at the the impact that's having both on the, the the national psyche, but also thinking about it within the sort of financial planning community as well. Um, yeah. I think on a national level, there, there does seem to be a bit of a sense of resignation, if you like, that the, the, this whole coronavirus issue is not going away anytime soon um obviously you you and i will know we've, we've both been through the uh, the covid experience so it, it can catch you really unawares no matter how careful and how cautious you're being so yes. i i think you know we do not have the power yet to stop this thing um within our armory as human beings i, I think we will get there but it will be a matter of you know a matter of months and years potentially before we can truly say that science has, has come to the rescue uh, and it's it's getting there faster than it ever has before, but it will still take a period of time. So I, I think people are now just resigning to the, the you know, the, the fact that the current sense of uncertainty is probably something we need to get a little bit more comfortable with. Um, right. And perhaps both as individuals, as businesses, you know, dare I say it, as, as a country, you know, on a national level, perhaps we need to start planning a little bit more in the kind of micro world rather than thinking about things on a, a 5, 10, 25 year horizon. And I, I think we've discussed before, I think my, my sense is that the it's the middle of your kind of planning and goal setting tracker that, that's probably going to be the most disrupted by this little phase that we're going through at the moment. Because I, I'm not convinced that anything about what's happening necessarily will, will change your super long-term overall goal and vision for the business you know if, if you've got an objective something you want to make happen in the world I I'm, don't think that would have changed it might have done you know perhaps the lockdown experience has changed what people want from life full stop so you know some yes. people might want to go right up to that kind of 50,000 foot view and almost redesign the the, the complete direction of travel but I, I suspect for most people those high level long long term you know 20 25 lifetime type goals right. will be largely the same uh, and equally I think that the, the sort of step by step on a day-to-day -day basis is probably quite similar as well I, I think the really tricky sort of phase to plan is the sort of one to three year time horizon and of course, that's always been the kind of the, the no man's land between your daily actions and your your kind of long term ambition is that sort of that medium term planning, which I think has been made very, very tricky um, at the moment. But as I said, I think that is something we, we need to get comfortable with. It, it, it's fair to say that the, uh, the coronavirus is probably not going away anytime soon unless we do have some 
you know, some miracle and it just fizzles out, which, which has happened historically, but I, I suspect the virus will be with us for a while. Right. So I, I suppose personally, I, I'm just, I'm trying to find greater ease with that situation. Just, you know, letting, you know, letting it go because it, as you will know, I'm, I'm, you know, ferociously competitive with my own goal tracker. And as soon as something goes on that piece of paper, I, I, I have to make it happen. I'm really quite, you know, quite committed to that. But this year, there are certain things that have just physically been impossible. You know, what, one of my goals this year was to attend a conference in the US. And of course, international travel effectively has been off the menu for the whole year. The conference itself didn't take place. So how, how can you attend a conference? <laughs> That, that doesn't exist. So I, I think this year I've just tried to get a bit more comfortable with the fact that, you know, do you know what? This is just totally outside of my control and that, you know, you, you just have to let it go. There's nothing you can do about it. Let it wash over you really. Right. And I think that that's perhaps what for me has been the, the starkest lesson in this kind of pandemic is that I believe that almost everything is within our own control that's you know not to say that some things and some goals and ambitions are not incredibly hard bordering on impossible but not quite impossible I don't think anything necessarily is quite impossible but that's all normally I think within our own control to a certain extent whereas this year we've got these you know massive external events coming from governments from businesses you know not just in this country but globally so it's not just the impact of our own government, it potentially it's the impact of international countries and governments that's having an influence on our own, you know, our own ambitions and our own plans for this year as well. So I think at the moment we just have to accept that that is how it is and that there's not much we can do to change it really. So how does that leave you? Because you and I have known each other for, what, five, six years now? My goodness. Um, and the one thing I'm aware about, Matt, is, is, is this real challenge that you have, that I have too, which haunts you once you've written something down. It will not let you go, and you have to accomplish it, which is a wonderful driving force. But how's that, how's all this change now left you feeling about that and about what you're capable of doing with the business? Yeah, I think certainly, you know, back back in lockdown mark one, I was I was really quite frustrated about that. I was I was feeling it quite hard. You know, to a certain extent, I was feeling a little bit like I'd failed. You know, well, I'm not going to do that this year, so that's one that's a cross for that box. That's a red cross. I don't like that. Right. And yeah, I, I was I was probably being too hard on myself, really, given the fact that this you know this is totally external circumstances, and and sometimes. That is how life is, really. So, yeah, as we approach 2021, I'm, I'm thinking about the planning and, and strategy. I suppose to a certain extent, I'm trying to set goals and objectives, but, you know, both personally and in the business that are probably going to be within our sphere of control. So, mm. yeah, on the assumption that the current kind of rolling restrictions and lockdowns and tears and everything else is probably going to be here till the summer next year if not beyond so i suppose to a certain extent i'm trying to use that as the backdrop and setting goals that are achievable within that context both as i say both individually but perhaps more importantly for the team as well because that you know that, that there's nothing worse i don't think for team morale than you know setting goals that are sort of impossible and and just feel too far away you know that there's nothing wrong with having crazy ambitions for 25 years time and that's just that's kind of the north star the, the guiding light that shows us where we're heading but i think on a weekly monthly quarterly yearly basis you, you should be setting objectives that i think that are stretching but definitely achievable and at the end of the year i think it's much better for, for the team if we can say yeah do you know what guys we've actually achieved what we wanted to achieve and you know what we've done 105 percent of that for example rather than the opposite which is to say oh we've just you know we've just missed that and we didn't quite and i don't think that's really that great for morale so i suppose 
you know, for, for next year, we're being just a little bit cautious about our objectives and what we want to achieve and just, you know, bearing in mind circumstances before we put pen to paper. So if you were just to pull that together for us um, to wrap up today's Monday moments, the question I'd lay before both of us, Matt, is what good has come out of this adversity for you? and for the people you care for? I think, well, I think for me, you know, the, the, the fact that just on a, you know, this is on a, a kind of very personal, you know, team level, but I, I think the fact that we have been very successful has benefited everybody. You know, that there has, in our firm, there's never been talk of furlough, there's never been talk of redundancies or anything like that. And I think, frankly, at a time like this, just having that security is incredibly valuable for our team. And, you know, I appreciate there's other people out there in the financial planning community who may not be so fortunate. So I'm really grateful that we've been able to provide that, that security to the team. So that, you know, that's something that I'm very grateful for. I, I also think that to a certain extent, I sort of feel like if, if we can get through this, then there's nothing we can't do. You know, you'll you'll know from our previous conversations that my ambitions have always been pretty, pretty lofty. Yes. And uh, I, I don't let simple things like, you know, rules and, and what, you know, what's happened before hold us back from what we want to achieve. And I, I think to a certain extent, it makes us feel stronger. It, you know, if we can get through this, then really, surely there's nothing that we can't do. I mean, f from, a, from a financial planning business to say, this is sort of all, all of the, the worst case scenario sort of rolled into one as far as I can tell really because it's a severe market event so you've got a market event on on the scale of the 2008 crisis and you know I, I just started advising back then so I remember sort of going through that with, with clients before so this is the same again possibly worse right. um, potentially over a longer period and then add on top of that all of the other challenges that we're dealing with, the closure of offices, home working, Zoom meetings, not being able to see clients face to face. And to be honest, I, I struggle to see another time in our lives where we would have so much working against us. It's not impossible as this current time has shown, but I think it, it, it's hard to foresee. If we think about the next 50 years, it's hard to foresee for the financial planning community another set of circumstances that will just throw so many curveballs all at one time. So I think, you know, if we can get through this, then really we can get through most things. Uh, and there's so many lessons and so many kind of teachings, I think, from this, this period that probably won't reveal themselves for many years to come. Um, and, you know, as Steve Jobs famously said, you can't connect the dots looking forwards you can only connect them looking backwards so I think to a certain extent we have to wait until we come through the other end of the tunnel and we can sort of look back and reflect on where we were what we've been through and where we've arrived at there will then be some really important lessons that we can pull out of that as well. Matt Smith, Managing Director of Buckingham Gate, thank you for um, sharing with us and teaching us some powerful lessons on Monday Moments um, we look forward to seeing you next week on the next Monday Moments. Thank you, Matt. No problem. Thanks for having me.